everyone, it's Andrea Tooley. Thank you so much for watching this video. I haven't made a video in so long, and I'm excited to sit down with you and tell you all about my fellowship in oculoplastic surgery here in New York City. So I'm sitting here in our new apartment in New York City. My husband Kyle and I moved here after I graduated residency in July, and now it's September. And so I'm just into my third month of fellowship, and it's been just an amazing experience. And so I want to tell you guys all about my fellowship, what it is, what I've been doing, how it's structured, things like that. So as most of you know, I completed my ophthalmology residency at Mayo Clinic. Ophthalmology is a four-year residency, so you do one year of internal medicine um, or your preliminary year, which doesn't have to be internal medicine. It could be general surgery or OB or anything like that. Um, but I did one year of internal medicine, and then you do three years of ophthalmology. And then after ophthalmology residency, you can practice as a general ophthalmologist and do all kinds of different surgeries on the eye and around the eye, or you can do fellowship. And there's a ton of different fellowship options available for ophthalmology. So you could do glaucoma, cornea, retina, pediatrics, neuro-ophthalmology, oculoplastics. There's so many different great things that you can do in ophthalmology, and I chose to do oculoplastics, which is uh, the full name is ophthalmic plastics and reconstructive surgery. And I made a video when I was applying for my plastics fellowship as I was a second year in residency about why I chose plastics and things like that. So now I've officially started my fellowship. It is a two-year fellowship and I'm here in New York City. This is the only oculoplastics fellowship in New York City. And so there's two of us. There's one every year since the two-year fellowship. So my senior fellow, my co-fellow, is one year ahead of me. And then I'm the junior fellow. And the next year, I'll have a new junior when I become a second year. We're accredited by the American Society of Ophthalmic Plastics and Reconstructive Surgeons, or ASOPers. So that's our accrediting body. And it's quite a small group. So there's about 25 new fellowship positions every year. And so um, for the large number of applicants that apply, there's only 25 spots a year. So it stays a pretty small group um, of people who are ASOPers accredited or ASOPers fellows. What an oculoplastics fellow does or an oculoplastic surgeon outside of fellowship does is basically surgery around the ocular adnexa. So the tissue surrounding the eye and then the tissues of the face. And so we're specialists in the eyelids, how the eyelids work to protect the eye, how they function, the orbit, which is the eye socket in the, in the eye where the eye sits, the bones, reconstructive surgery involving the skin or the bones for trauma, skin cancers, tumors back in the eye socket. We do things like thyroid eye disease, if you know people who have Graves, hyperthyroidism, who get bulging eyes or proptosis. We can do orbital decompression surgeries to help with that. We can do all kinds of rejuvenation and cosmetic procedures around the eye, the mid face or the upper face, the eyebrows, all that kind of fun stuff. And then we also do very simple things like um, fixing droopy eyelids or excess skin over the eye um, or bags under the eyes, any kind of cosmetic surgery or functional surgery involving the eyelids or tissues around the eyes. Really, that's our specialty. There's lots of other people that perform similar procedures or do the same kind of things, regular plastic surgeons, dermatologists who are surgically trained, all kinds of other people. But I think there's something really special about having the ophthalmology training before doing an oculoplastics fellowship because you have such a profound understanding of the eyeball itself. And I think it really makes us excellent surgeons at the tissue around the eye because we understand the eye unlike anyone else. The way my fellowship is structured is that we really cover about six institutions. And so I cover Cornell, Columbia, New York Ioneer, NYU, Bellevue, and Manhattan Ioneer, as well as some private practices that then operate at some of those institutions. So we're really all around the city. We get to experience all kinds of different patient populations because we're all the way up north at Columbia and then all the way down south at New York Ioneer. We really get the whole island of Manhattan, which is incredible, and we get to treat so many different conditions, which I love. The first year of my fellowship is pretty scheduled where I'm supposed to be somewhere every single day and the second year of our fellowship has a little bit more flexibility and elective time so that you can do electives depending on what you want to focus on. I particularly am interested in orbital surgery, orbital inflammation, orbital tumors, and so that surgery in the eye socket behind the eye and the tissues around the eye back in the eye socket. You do a lot of combination cases with neurosurgery or ENT or oral maxillofacial surgeons, OMFS. 
And so I probably will spend a decent amount of my elective time doing those kinds of things next year. I'd also love to spend some time with ear, nose, and throat, ENT doctors, um, and then also learn some more cosmetic procedures like Botox and fillers and those kinds of things. But our first year is pretty structured, and so with that, I'm operating at the same places every day of the week. Um, I'm always at Columbia on Mondays. I'm always at Cornell or New York Eye on Fridays. I'm always at a private practice on Thursdays, things like that. There's a decent amount of kind of structure and stability to my fellowship. So how it works, and I'll just give you kind of a total overview of what my kind of day and life is like as a fellow, is on Monday morning I wake up and I go to Columbia. I live pretty close to Cornell on the Upper East Side, and I'm so lucky because there's a shuttle that runs between Cornell and Columbia, and Columbia is quite far. Um, and so I can just jump on the shuttle at Cornell, which is just a quick walk from my house, like a 10 minute walk. I get on the shuttle and then it takes me all the way to Columbia, and I'm at Columbia all day every Monday. And that doesn't change, that stays stable for my entire first year of fellowship, which is amazing. On Tuesdays, I alternate between clinic at Columbia or clinic at Cornell. Occasionally we have some pediatric cases that we add on Tuesdays at Columbia and if that's the case then I'll definitely go there because I want as much surgical experience as I can get. But otherwise I'll be in clinic either at Cornell or Columbia and again I just walk right to Cornell or I walk to Cornell and take the shuttle to Columbia so that's pretty easy. Wednesdays are kind of a flex day for our fellowship and so there's a lot of opportunities to add on cases in the operating room if we have cases on call or cases of trauma or emergency cases that we need to add on. Wednesdays are perfect for that. Otherwise, there's always someone doing something so we're kind of somewhere different every Wednesday depending on what's going on. This past Wednesday, I was at Cornell and I saw several patients and then I did some procedures in the minor procedure room there at Cornell. On Thursdays, I spend the entire day at a private practice it's about a 30 minute walk from our house and I love walking, especially in the summer. It's such a nice walk. It's great to have a little exercise in the morning and then to walk home after clinic in the evening to kind of decompress. And so I'm really enjoying walking. I like to stop at a little coffee shop on the way there and just kind of enjoy a morning in New York as I walk to clinic. Uh, maybe that'll change when it gets cold and snowy and I'll want to take the train, but we'll see. For now, I'm really enjoying my walks there. And I spend the entire day in clinic there. Um, and then I often, after clinic is over, stick around. It's close to Bryant Park and I'll go to a yoga class there before I walk home. But sometimes I just walk straight home after clinic. And then finally, Fridays, I'm usually at Cornell. Um, in the operating room, we have quite a few surgical cases every Friday. Occasionally there aren't cases at Cornell and then I'll join the second year fellow at New York Eye and Ear. And that's a rotation that the second year fellow and I spend three months on and then we flip. So starting in October, I will be at New York Eye and Ear on Fridays and my co-fellow will be at Cornell on Fridays. And so there's a bit of variety but for the most part every day of my week is the same from week to week. I think one thing I was nervous about with this fellowship is that I would be running around quite a bit and I'd be like all over New York and be going from place to place and spending all of my time tr trying to kind of traverse the city, but that's really not the case. I feel like for the most part I'm somewhere for the entire day, even though every day I'm somewhere different, I spend the whole day there. So it's not that bad, the commutes are not that bad, um, and yeah, I'm really enjoying kind of getting to see lots of different places. I think fellowship is quite a bit different from residency in that there's less structure, there's more autonomy. I am definitely covering the residents on call, so residents will call me about cases that they want to run by me, and a lot of times I know enough to tell the resident and we don't need to go get faculty or staff, um, and it feels good to be in an advanced level of training where I know what's going on, I know the diagnosis, and I know the treatment, and I know what patients need. And I'm learning more and more every day that I'm really enjoying this role with more autonomy. I think fellowship is similar to residency in that there's a lot of self-directed learning. So it's on you to read about your patients, to read about the surgical cases you have and learn how to do them, and um, to kind of build your own study schedule. There aren't set lectures or didactic sessions that you always have in medical school and you sometimes have in residency. Um, that's even less in fellowship. Although we do have journal clubs and meetings with our mentors and all of our mentors are constantly giving us things to read and telling us things to study. But I still think at the end of the day it is a bit, a bit more self-directed than definitely than medical school and even more so than residency. All in all, I'm 
absolutely adoring my fellowship. I'm having such a blast here in New York City. My husband and I are having a great time exploring the city. We go out to eat all the time. It's a completely different life than what we had when we lived in Minnesota. If any of you were following us when we lived in Rochester, Minnesota, which is where Mayo Clinic is, you'll know that we cooked a lot. We never ate out. We always ate at home. Well, I will tell you, life is completely different here in New York City. We are eating out all the time, exploring new restaurants, new foods, having such a great time. I found a yoga studio that I love, and so I'm making it a point to go to yoga about three times a week, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. And then I've also discovered Soul Cycle, which is a terrible thing to love because it's so expensive. Uh, but I am going occasionally with some of my girlfriends and having a blast with that. I'd love any of your New York City recommendations, so please leave them in the comments below. In the description box, I'll leave some more information about fellowship and what exactly I'm doing, but I'm happy to share everything with you. I'm always on Instagram, so follow me on Instagram. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll try to make more videos for you guys. Thanks so much.